Okay, so today we're going to start talking about fluid kinematics. And um, today is going to be all about a new way of mathematically describing the motion of fluids. Um, well, really mathematically describing any property of fluids. So um, before we used to talk about how a uh, fluid particle has a velocity, right? So in Bernoulli's we would talk about how the fluid has a velocity v at a point, right? Um, and that velocity v is equal to some function of time. Okay? Um, and this is what we would call a Lagrangian point of view where the acceleration then is something we're very familiar with uh, is just uh, dv dt, right? It's the, it's the rate of change of the velocity with time. Now this is very intuitive to you, right? Because this, this is the same way we would describe the velocity of a ball after we've thrown it or um, something rolling down a hill or really you know it's intuitive because uh, you were trained this way since um, your first physics class Who knows when you took it, but it's probably been years that you've been doing this, right? However, uh, even mildly complex fluid problems um, become intractable. Uh, yeah. So, for example, if you look at the restrictions on Bernoulli's, right, we can't really accurately use Bernoulli's on very many problems. And part of that reason is because we restricted ourselves to a coordinate system where we, um, looking at fluid elements, we, uh, so we were looking at the, the uh, forces on a single fluid element, right, and treating that fluid element as though it were a... Uh, a particle moving through space and um, we had to do a lot of simplifications in order to do that which is like flow along a streamline da, 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 right so the restrictions on Bernoulli's are a direct consequence of how complex fluid flow analysis can, analysis can get if you keep and maintain a Lagrangian point of view which is this idea that each fluid particle has a velocity that is only a function of time right um, and then if we want to figure out the position, you, you integrate the velocity, right? So x is equal to some uh, integral of v of t. So you can figure out x as a function of time, you have to integrate it. Our new point of view is that um, each point in space has a velocity. So our now, um, our velocity, which is a vector, is equal to, oh, by the way, this is a vector too. Um, our vec velocity vector is equal to some velocity in the some u direction velocity. There's a function of x, y, z, and time, plus v, which is a function of x, y, z, and time. And you'll note that u is just the u component of our velocity v. V is just the V component of our velocity V because U is multiplied by the unit vector in the X direction. V is multiplied by the unit vector in the I di uh, Y direction. I, I wrote I twice. That's J hat. Um, plus uh, W, X, Y, Z, T of K hat. So... Um, what this means is that our u, we could pick a point in space, plug in the point, that point in space, x, y, and z, the, uh, the coordinates x, y, and z, 
and the time, and we can calculate the x, y, and z component of the velocity there. Um, this is called an Eulerian point of view. Um, here, our acceleration becomes more complicated. Uh, our acceleration is now, uh, and we'll derive this, but it's the partial of v with the partial of t um, plus u du dx plus uh, v dv dy plus w dw dz. Um, and uh, yeah. So this is, um, this is called, by the way, the total derivative. Well, this is the total derivative of the velocity. We'll get into that a little bit later. Um, this is difficult because it's non intuitive, right? And it's non intuitive because we can have an acceleration even if it's steady state, right? So we're used to acceleration only being possible if, uh, if things are changing with time. And here, let's say it's steady state, we can easily set dv dt equal to zero, but we still have a u du dx, a v dv dy, and a w dw dz. And one way to think about this is imagine that you're in a river that is flowing at a steady state like this where we have a low velocity here and then you go down um, a hill some kind of incline you're going much faster at the bottom right and imagine you're floating around maybe on a little little life raft and then you're sitting there like this um, you're floating along on this from your perspective so first of all we're in steady state the velocity everywhere is constant with time if we pick a velocity uh, here, a velocity here, and a velocity here, when we uh, the velocity does not change with time. Yet, as you flow along with this water, your velocity, your velocity is going to change, right? You start speeding up, you speed up even more, and now you're going fast, really fast, as you get down at the bottom. And so if this is our x direction, let's actually draw some coordinates here, x, y. This is our x direction. What you see is that du dx is positive because we're increasing our velocity in the x direction. u is small, and here u is large, right? So du dx increases, so we have a positive du dx, and then our u multiplied by this tells us how fast we accomplish that change in velocity. So if we're moving quite slow, but we have a large change in velocity, our acceleration is not gonna be as fast as if we are moving fast and we have a small change in velocity. So this tells us how much our velocity changes and this tells us how fast we accomplish it. And if you look at the units on this, we have a meters per second times a meters per second per meter so these cancel out and we get a meters per second squared. So it is indeed an acceleration, but really what it is is it tells us, one, how much our velocity will change, and two, how fast we accomplish that. Because we know our velocity is gonna change between large and small over this distance here, and then how fast we cover that distance tells us how fast our acceleration is. Um, so yeah, in some ways it's not intuitive, right? Uh, but we can easily apply um, differential equations to, uh, to describe and analyze the flow. So remember when we wrote tau is equal to mu du dy? Um, 
uh, evaluated at like H or some surface, right? This is a direct consequence of using an Eulerian point of view. We have a U velocity and we're taking the derivative with respect to Y. And we're evaluating that velocity at a particular surface, which means at a specific point in space, we're actually measuring the gradient in the velocity. So when we were using tau, when we were calculating the, uh, um, the gradient, when we were calculating the shear stress using the gradient and the velocity, which remember we were mostly doing a Couette flow, so it was um, um, we we're mostly doing Couette flow, so it's mostly just v over h. Uh, we we were using an Eulerian point of view. We just hadn't told you yet, so. Um, So yeah, so uh, so let's write out again what v is equal to, right? So v is equal to u of x, y, z, and t. V is a function. V is a function of x, y, z, and t, and w is a function of x, y, z, and t. So you can imagine this gets complex quite quite quickly, right? Um, but we can apply some tricks that reduce the dimensionality and so we can reduce the complexity. So what if we have two infinite planes and one is moving and the other is stationary? We've talked about this before, right? The result of this is Couette flow. It's one of those flows that are, well, frankly named after whoever got there first, some French dude, obviously. Um, so uh, one moving, the other stationary, where we have a V is equal to a U, but it's an X velocity U, right? Zero velocity in the Y direction, zero velocity in the Z direction. So if this is the case, let's draw our velocity profile. You've drawn this a few times already. So we know that it's a linear velocity profile like this. we know that we can reduce our velocity expression because there's not going to be any velocity in the z direction, right? So here's our x, y, and our z. So into and out of the page, we're not going to have any flow because there's no reason for there to be flow in that direction. Our velocity v is on, of our top plate is only in the x direction. So we can say that this is zero. Um, likewise, if nothing is, if we have no velocity in the z direction and nothing is changing in the z direction, then we can re just remove that dimension from our expression and we can write u is a function of x, y, and t, and v is a function of x, y, and t. And if we say steady state, it becomes even simpler. u is a function of x and y, and v is a function of x and y. And this is mostly where we're going to live, is in a steady state two-dimensional system. And as a little exercise, so yeah, we're going to live in this, this world, which is a steady state two-dimensional system, which is, is uh, achievable by hand. Um, one of the great applications of using a more complex um, expression like this is that computers can handle this no problem. So computational fluid dynamics packages will always treat the velocity in this way. And then, um, but it doesn't care about complexity, right? Well, it does, just not nearly as much. Um, well, also it has no feelings. It just takes more time. So uh, yeah, so we're going to live here. And, and an example of how simple these velocity expressions can be, let's write out the Eulerian velocity expression for this velocity profile. Um, here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do the u direction. We already know that the velocity at the base is zero. So when y is equal to zero, u is equal to zero. And when y is equal to h, u is equal to capital U. Sorry, v. Yeah, u is equal to capital U. All right. So that's easy. It's just a line, a line that goes through zero, zero. So its intercept is zero. And then its slope is u over h. So we have u over h times y. 
i hat plus, and then we have no y velocity, it's all in the x direction, so our v component of our velocity is actually zero, plus zero j hat, plus zero k hat, because again, we have no velocity into or out of the page. So our Eulerian point of view for describing this velocity of this entire system, where we have infinite plates moving past each other, is um, really quite simple and something that we've, we've been familiar with, right? Great. So uh, we're going to skip over the quiz, not quiz. We're going to do that in class. Uh, but our next lecture will briefly talk about some vocab. And then we will do a plot of streamline that passes through a point as a way of practicing our Eulerian point of view of velocities. Great.